morning, boys and girls. Good morning. I'm uh, Glenn Ortega, and I'm a Dallas fireman, and I work at Station 35, which is over on Walnut Hill in Marsh Lane, as uh, Northwest Dallas. And I'm going to be reading a story to, uh, to you today about the fire station. But first of all, I want to show you a little bit about our gear that we wear when we go to fight fires. And I brought that with me today. And first of all, I'm going to show you our helmet that we wear. Uh, it's a little heavy, but what happens is we put this on along with our coat. And this is our bunker coat, which we wear in the fires and has our name. Fire Department Dallas. We have little ID tags that when we go onto the engine, they'll know who's riding on the engine that day. So I have my little Velcro identification tag that we put every morning when we come in and we get on the fire engine. We put it on a little, it's a little dash on the fire engine and that way the captain knows that we're there on the uh, fire apparatus. We also have our boots. Actually, I have them tucked into my pants. And these are called bunker pants. And what happens is when we go to fight fires and we hear a bell, we put our feet into this, into these boots, and we pull the pants up. And we're ready to go. So when you see the firemen on the fire engine and they have a t-shirt on with some pants and boots, that's how quick we can get those on. And I'll probably let y'all try that on in a minute. But I just want to show you and let you get familiar with what we actually wear. The reason why we wear this is what do you think for? So you don't get burned. <laughs> That's right. So we don't get burned. Because uh, we can go into fires that can reach up to 800, 900 degrees uh, in one room. So it just depends. It can get so hot that it could melt the top, the top of this uh, helmet right here. It can make it bubble that it gets so hot. So that's why we wear this. Uh, what happens is this is called an outer shell of the coat, which actually will protect you it really isn't fireproof, but it, it will protect you from radiant heat of a fire. So like when you get, when you turn on the stove, on uh, when you're going to cook something, you can feel the heat, the warmth coming off of the stove, and that means that you don't want to get too close. Well, this lets us get a little bit closer to that heat because it uh, protects you from that radiant heat that comes. And it also has insulation that's in here, and it also uh, keeps us from getting wet. So if we're, you know, kind of keeps you snuggled basically and keeps you away from stuff but it actually doesn't prevent you from getting burnt because you can actually it can get so hot that it can eventually go through this coat but these are the things that we wear and if you ever wonder how we breathe because you know if you've ever smoked some I mean you smell the smoke and you try to breathe in on fire it's really hard to breathe isn't it and you want to cough and and what happens is we have a mask that we wear along with once we put on our bunker boots our pants our coat the next thing that goes on is our mask and we have a mask here and we can see everything that's going on and we hook up uh, a self-contained breathing ap apparatus is short for SCBA and what that is it's a cylinder that looks like a little oxygen tank on like you, you wear backpacks to school do y'all wear backpacks to school well we have the same thing but what's inside the cylinder is not oxygen it's compressed air and the reason why we don't actually wear oxygen is because oxygen is a flammable uh, it can actually burn so if it gets too hot those little oxygen tanks can burn so if you see firemen with little tanks on uh, you might want to tell your friends you'll know now that that's not actually oxygen it's just really air just compressed in the little cylinder what happens is we have our backpacks on top of our little coats and when I have this mask on we have a little regulator that just hooks right here and if you ever seen that movie Star Wars that's basically how we're breathing and then you can breathe like that and that normally lasts about 15 to 20 minutes each cylinder so when you go into a house you have all this uh, equipment on and what I will let you do too is this is called a Nomex hood this actually protects us from getting our ears and neck burnt. It protects it really our ears and our neck from getting burnt. And what happens is, uh, anybody want to try this on? Well, we'll let I'll pick out two people later on, and we'll let them try out the hood and probably the helmet, and just let you see what the what it looks like to go 
into a fire basically and this is pretty heavy uh, once you put all the uh, gear on uh, can anybody guess about how much you might weigh take a guess 10 pounds 20 pounds well actually they said it actually weighs about 30 to 40 pounds once you put on all the equipment and you put besides what you weigh so if you weigh about a about a hundred and sixty pound person or man once you put all the gear on you're getting close to about two hundred pounds once you have everything on so that's why you try to stay in good shape to because this gear is he uh, heavy but it's very helpful because it keeps you from getting burnt okay now I'm gonna go ahead and read you the story about the fire truck or the fire station Michael and Sheila were walking down the street. As they passed the fire station, Sheila said, Michael, let's go ride the fire truck. Well, said Michael, I think maybe I should ask my mother, and I think maybe I should ask my father, and I think maybe. I think we should go in, said Sheila. Then she grabbed Michael's hand and pulled him up to the door. Sheila knocked. Blam, 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 blam. A large fireman came out and asked, What can I do for you? Well, said Michael, maybe you could show us a fire truck and hoses and rubber boots and ladders and all sorts of stuff like that. Certainly, said the fireman. And maybe, said Sheila, you will let us drive a fire truck. Certainly not, said the fireman. They went in and looked at the ladders and the hoses and the big rubber boots. Then they looked at the little fire trucks and big fire trucks and the enormous fire trucks. And when they were done, Michael said, let's go. Right, said Sheila. Let's go into the enormous fire truck. While they were in the truck, the fire alarm went off. Clang, 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 clang. Oh, no, said Michael. Oh, yes, said Sheila. And she grabbed Michael and pulled him into the back seat. Firemen came running from all over. They slid down poles and ran downstairs. Then they jumped onto the truck and drove off. The firemen didn't look back into the back seat. Michael and Sheila were in the back. they came to an enormous fire. Lots of yucky colored smoke got all over everything. It covered Michael, yellow, green, and blue. It colored Sheila, purple, green, and yellow. When the fire chief saw them, he said, what are you doing here? Sheila said, we came in the fire truck. We thought maybe it was a bus. We thought maybe it was a taxi. We thought maybe it was an elevator. We thought maybe, I think maybe I'd better take you home, said the chief. He put Michael and Sheila in his car and drove them away. When Michael got home, he knocked on the door. His mother opened it and said, You missy boy, you can't come in and play with Michael. You're too dirty. She slammed the door right in Michael's face. My own mother, said Michael. She didn't even know me. He knocked on the door again. His mother opened the door and said, You dirty boy, you can't come in and play with Michael. You're too dirty. You're absolutely filthy. You're a total mess. You're, oh, oh, you're Michael. <laughs> Michael went inside and lived in the bathroom for three days until he got clean. When Sheila came home, she knocked on the door. Her father opened it and saw an incredibly messy girl. He said, you can't come in to play with Sheila. You're too dirty. He slammed the door on her face. Ow, she said Sheila, my own father, and he didn't even know me. She kicked and pounded on the door as loudly as she could. Her father opened the door and said, now stop that racket, you dirty girl. You can't come in to play with Sheila. You're too dirty. You're absolutely filthy. You're a total mess. You're oh." 
Oh, oh no, you're Sheila. Right, said Sheila. I went to a fire in the back of a fire truck and I got all smoky. I wasn't even scared. Sheila went inside and lived in the bathtub for five days until she got clean. Then Michael took Sheila on a walk past the police station. He told her, if you ever take me in another fire truck, I am going to ask the police to put you in jail. Jail, yelled Sheila. Let's go look at the jail. What a great idea. Oh no, yelled Michael. And Sheila grabbed his hand and pulled him into the police station. The end.